Good morning. Welcome to church. Welcome. Please come take a seat. It's so lovely to be here with everybody today and lovely smiling faces. The verse I just felt for today was um, in Psalm 24. It says, lift up your heads, you ancient gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, so that the King of glory may, came, may come in. And who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. So we welcome the Heavenly Father. We welcome the King of glory into our midst this morning. We welcome the angels of the Lord into this building this morning. We welcome His, his deliverance, His salvation. We welcome His restoration. Everywhere, you know, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And where we're in His presence, there's all good things. And so all the good things are made available to us this morning. And if you have a need, He's here. He's here and just call out to Him. He's able to restore. He's able to heal. And um, yeah, so let's just come with that hope this morning. We're going to read through the um, declaration together. And we're going to pray for the government. <laughs> so let's pray for the government before our declaration. Because we love when righteousness rules in a nation. So, Lord, we just thank you for our government. We thank you, Lord, that you put people in places of authority. And I pray that these, these ones in, in leadership over our nation, Lord, that their hearts would be turned towards you. We thank you, Lord God, that you would give them wisdom and discernment, Lord, that there would be even a spirit of repentance over our nation, Lord, that there would be a returning of the heart of this nation, Lord, to the gospel truth, to the firm foundation of Jesus Christ, Lord, that we would not be a nation swayed by ungodliness, but we would be a, a nation rooted and grounded in love. And Lord, I just pray as well that you give the church a voice into the, into the parliament, that you give the church a voice with these leaders, Lord, that they would, they would be seeking godly counsel in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. So we'll go through the declaration together. I don't think it likes me. <laughs> this happened last time. <laughs> Welcome, okay, let's all read. Welcome to the House of Miracles. <laughs> okay, here we go. So let's all go together. 2023 is the year of heartfelt hunger for God's presence. I pursue the love of God and desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit. My life demonstrates that the gospel is powerful to save, heal, and deliver. As I abide in Jesus daily and his words abide in me, his kingdom comes with power, producing fruit for eternity. I believe I receive dreams, visions, and revelation to bring the greatest revival of the ages to this generation. A fresh anointing, a house of miracles, a church on fire for Jesus to trample sickness, pain, and suffering. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We welcome you with praise, almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore, let every soul away, almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. You welcome in this place. You welcome in this place. You welcome. 
rise from the dead A great light has dawned Shout for joy Let us see Daughter of Zion Put on your strength Shake off the dust And give praise to the King Wake up, O sleeper Arise from the dead A great light has dawned Shout for joy, let us sing Daughter of Zion Put on your strength Shake up the dust And give praise to the King Give praise to the King We cry We cry Yeah. 
There's a greater joy in His presence. There's a greater peace in His presence. In Your presence, I don't have to strive. There's no pressure. There's no striving. The Lord is good, and He is God, and He is Lord. He's a good, good King. You taste and see, the Lord is good.
in the house why don't you reach up one or two hands and just just receive from him hallelujah this is not a time to to pray long prayers it's just a time to receive hallelujah the Lord doesn't come in judgment he comes in grace and he comes with power and his power is here right now to restore sick bodies to restore broken things in your body hallelujah I just really feel right now whether it is a whether you have a runny nose or whether you have diabetes or you you have problems in hearing right now let the power of God touch you just reach out a hand and say Lord I receive my healing I receive my miracle I receive from you Lord right now I receive deliverance from this pain that's in my body I receive deliverance from this lack of hearing, that, that deaf ear, that left ear that's not hearing. I thank you, Lord. Right now, I receive. Just put your hand there. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just walk over to Tony. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you, Lord, that you are the miracle worker. In Jesus' name, I command you, you evil sickness, you disease, get out of this body. Leave in Jesus' name. Leave and never come back. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory. We thank you for your power. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just continue to worship the Lord. Just praise Him. Thank Him. He, in, he indwells the praises of His people. Ah. I woke up with this word this morning, alabar, in Spanish, means praise. Alabar. Alabar. Hallelujah. Let's say it. Alabar. Wonderful. Wonderful. We worship you. We praise you. God dwells. He inhabits. It's attractive to Him when you praise Him. It's attractive to Him when you don't grumble and complain, but you're actually giving Him the praise. You give Him the only place He deserves. And that's the place of praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are moving. You are healing. You are setting people free. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to cut it short. I want you to sit down. <laughs> Glory to God. When God brings His prophets in the house, we want to hear as well. Amen. Why don't you thank the, the musicians and the singers for bringing us in. Hallelujah. Amen. Wonderful job, guys. Thank you. Amen. Amen. How many of you are glad you came? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some new faces that I see. That's wonderful. We will reward you for coming. You get a free coffee after the service. Amen. Hallelujah. How many were here last week? At least five. <laughs> Wave a hand if you were here last week. How many remember that testimony that, that we had of this, uh, this gentleman who came a month ago and he had prostate cancer, aggressive they said it was bad, it was going to, he had to have operation, chemo, all sorts of things. But then he came here for prayer. He says, I've heard that in faith life, they pray for the sick and they get healed. So he came, we prayed with him. In fact, with some of the family of Danny's family were here, we, we prayed with Christy and, and Peter, they were here too, and we prayed. And he said, I felt something. I felt something. What do we got here? This is this week's. That'll come later. <clears throat> and um, he felt some, and so he, he had to go in for operation. He, he went to the doctor and he said, I'd like you to check me out again. And um, long story short, they had found that the cancer had stopped growing. Hallelujah. They said, we were just going to remove it and that'll be it. But then we hear, we hear this week, get this, the cancer has shrunk. They, they did a blood test, and they said you had a lot of markers of cancer in your, in your body, in your blood, and it's, the count is down by six. I don't know what, what six means, but I understand that that must be good. So this is a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's this? He's not having any operation. Now, I don't know him real well, but I, if he, I know he loves the Lord, but this is all very new to him. But he's telling people, I went to that place. I got healed. God healed him. Hallelujah. So, how many of you know that testimonies will tell you God will do it again? I'm going, we're gonna, I'm going to ask Sigrid to come at this point. Why don't you come up real quick? We had a, uh, we had a fire tunnel last week and and Sigrid told me she's not that keen on fire tunnels she thinks it's all very new to her never been through one and then and then I'm gonna let you tell I'll let you tell it 
I'm going to hold the microphone because we've only got a couple of minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us. Um, well, no, I was going to start with last Wednesday. Yeah, start with um, last Wednesday. I was at work up some very high steps and I was preparing to paint some steps and I had a very quick attack of vertigo. And when it hits me hard, I become like a drunk person and the world is spinning and I can't do anything. Mm. And Alan had to come from Withcott to rescue me. I was in Toowoomba. So I was home sick, quite sick for quite a few days. And Friday afternoon, Alan took me shopping and I was using the trolley to hold it. And we had a bit of an argument in the shop. <laughs> And I went home and I was a bit cranky and we had a really big argument. <laughs> and uh, I was like, I don't want to live with you anymore. I've had enough of you. We've just had our 38th anniversary <laughs> a couple of days before. Anyhow, I was, I was really sick. And then Sunday I was like, oh, I don't think I better go to church because I was still a bit wobbly. And I was supposed to be in kids' church. And I thought, oh, I've committed to it. I better go because I was filling in for Faye, I think. So I, w I came and I still couldn't walk properly. And as I came into the building, uh, Leslie and Bob prayed for my vertigo to leave. I didn't leave straight away. I went into kids' church and when I have vertigo, my brain goes very foggy and fuzzy. So I can't read or I can't think straight. And Michaela said, you're probably better to go back into church because there was only a couple of kids there. So I came back in and then you come up with this, uh, what do you call it? The, the fire tunnel. My immediate memory is, oh, those crazy things because I've seen them in the tents in the park and I've never gone through one. And Alan, being Alan, absolutely loves all the crazy stuff. And he would go through them and I would think, what's the sense in them? They're just weird. So I thought, no, nah, I'm not going to go through this. And then it was like Steve had a fishing rod and hooked me and reeled me in. And I thought, I better go because I heard the word joy. And I didn't have any joy. I was so sick. I had this argument that wasn't resolved yet. And I just didn't want to be alive. And I thought, joy sounds like a good word. Maybe I should go. So Daya had to hold me up a little bit because I was still wobbly. And she's pushing me behind through. And it looked like I was drunk in the spirit, but I wasn't. <laughs> I was drunk with vertigo. Anyhow, we went home and I just thought, wonder what that was all about. And gave no more thought to it. And then the next morning, I get an email with some bad news about our house that we've been praying for for 22 months and a peace came over me wow. when I found out that we weren't getting the house. Alan spiralled down and I rose up and the, I, this peace just enveloped me and then I was just full of joy <laughs> at this really bad situation and then later on Alan and I were talking about it and I said Jim I think the tunnel had something to do with <laughs> the way I feel. And he says, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So I just thank you for having the tunnel and helping me <laughs> find joy. It's just wonderful. God bless you. <laughs> That's wonderful. We love testimony because testimony is prophesying God will do it again. Amen. He's no respecter of person. All right. I better get moving on on this. <clears throat> just a couple of... Um, little um, announcements. This week is children's, is, is, is basically the children's uh, holidays, right? It's, it's school holidays. So there's very few announcements because uh, a lot of things don't happen during holidays that normally do. So just check the website and uh, it'll tell you exactly what is happening this week. Um, I know that the, uh, hang on a minute, the men are meeting again, not this Saturday, but the following but you'll hear a little bit more about detail of where and how. Yes. This is today. Yes. Today. Right. Better run. <laughs> <laughs> Those sausage rolls are amazing. All right.
Um, you want me to, the leadership course? Okay. So Thursday, July the 6th through the 24th. We, and then, uh, yeah. Okay. That, and that goes right on through to August is a leadership course at church auditorium, this place. Uh, meet back briefly at 12 p.m. in the auditorium today. Back, please stand so that everybody knows who you are. This beautiful lady, she'll be here after the service uh, to give you some more details about that. Requirements is church partnership. You're a member of this church. Completion of the CVI, CVE, and VI. How's that? And a whole heap of other things. But it's important that you go see her if you want to do that course. All right? Now, uh, there was something else that sort of popped into my head, but now it's gone again. Um, yeah, we're going to do the offering. Ellen, why don't you come real quickly? And um, Ellen had, um, has something on his heart that I'm going to give him 30 seconds to say. <laughs> now, I'm going to hold this. I'm going to hold this. Yeah, you better. I trust you as long as I hold this. Uh, last week, um, you were sharing about giving, I think yeah. it was you, yeah. and uh, something rose in with me, um, almost anger, but it wasn't anger, it was just a real determination in my spirit. Mm. Um, years ago, I had nothing but troubles with cars, and there was no one there to help me, and I'm in a church where we're encouraged to be givers, extravagant givers, mm. and, um, and I just felt that there was a family in this church that has a need of a car. I got a car, but it's not a very good car. Mm. And when I was talking to someone about it, they gave me 50 bucks and said, give that towards helping them out. And I said, well, I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to be a bit bold and ask people for money. Mm. And so I want to encourage you, anyone that wants to give for the car cause, meet me over there at the desk and just tell me that's the case. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Is that a good idea? Fantastic. All right, real quick. Offering, Romans 1.17. What does it say? It says the just, the righteous. How many righteous people here? Wave your hand. We need an altar call. <laughs> if you receive Jesus into your life, you are right. Say, I'm righteous. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. You're as righteous as they come. Amen. So we're going we're gonna to give time uh, for the offering. Here's all of the different ways you can give. Bank transfer, card, online, cash and check. Father, we thank you, Lord. We receive um, the, the offering and the giving, the tithes, we bless those who give. We bless their gift in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget, August 13, we're going to have a special offering for this house, for this building. There's some things that we need. We need air conditioning. Say praise the Lord. And there's some things we need to do to that wall as well. Um, $75,000 will get us a long way. But you go before the Lord and you ask him your part in this. And I'll tell you what, together we're going to see all those needs met because this is his house. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you stand and welcome one of my favorite preachers all from all over the world and a powerful prophet. She's in the house. She's with us this morning. She's done the, the, uh, the conference with the women. I tell you, she's loaded. Why don't you give her a big faith life. God bless you as she comes to minister. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Praise God. Wow. Man, what a fabulous worship time today. What an amazing sense of God's presence today. Amen. Wow, and uh, I've just been having a most uh, fantastic weekend. Had a wonderful time with the ladies Friday night and Saturday. And uh, Pastor Danny actually said it felt more like an encounter day. And it really did because it was, you know, it wasn't so much me, but it was the worship team. It was, the, um, you know, um, Danny and... and um, uh, <laughs> Leslie and Jeanette and the words and the flow of the prophetic and it was just wonderful. So um, just thank you so much to, for those that are coming that come out and we had a great time. The worship team were just amazing. Thank you so much to um, uh, Michelle. That's right, <laughs> and Michelle and 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 uh, <laughs> all the others. <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm showing my age. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Juliana, 
Crystal and the rest of the team that played and um, it was just wonderful, great effort. I want to say thank you too to Christelle who just so looked after me amazingly and uh, where are you Christelle? Give me a wave. Ah, praise the Lord. Thank you so much and um, just a, it was a wonderful time and, and um, thank you Juliana for or having me come and stay in her house. It's such a beautiful place, Ben, and uh, I nearly didn't want to go, you know. <laughs> you know, being entrenched in there, you might be hard, hard to get me out, but yeah, no, it's been fabulous. But also I want to say thank you to Danny and Steve for just being the most amazing pastors and friends and just uh, incredible. Um, just uh, talk about somebody who's in boots and all. I have never, ever been with them where there, there was ever a negative this is, you know, God's not that, they're just full on, pedal to the metal, faith for God, you know, and uh, it's, it's, it's challenging and uh, always encourages people to go to the next level, so God bless you both, and uh, thank you also to, to, to all the leaders that are in this house. I want to pray for some people before I get into the word, so uh, Leslie, I might get you to... <laughs> I was taking by faith that word on balance with vertigo. <laughs> I haven't got vertigo at all, but anyway, praise God. I'm getting better. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for some people, if I may. And um, can I pray for you guys? Is that okay? Yeah. Mm. Uh, whatever you feel. You can sit. You can sit down. That's okay. Chill out. Yeah. <laughs> Father, thank you for this precious couple. The Lord says, know that I'm the God of the hundredfold return. And I've seen your faith and even your, your heart after God and even the things that you have sown in prayer, sown in finance, sown in time, sown in faith. And I do see these sewing baskets around about you. And God says, know that the, this is a time when the, when the 12 basket loads of leftovers, the multiplication is coming around about your lives. And you're gonna see I'm the God of the overflow. And, and uh, the Lord says, the limits are off. The sky's the limit. So the Lord says, hitherto you've not asked for yourself to the degree that I would have you to ask. So ask largely that your joy may be filled. And the Lord says, know that I'm working even amongst your family, amongst your loved ones. And this is going to be a season like no other. For it's going to be such a reaping. And even as you've cast your bread, you've cast your prayers, you've cast your hopes upon the waters. And after a number of days, it returns on every wave. So the Lord says the tide is on the turn. This is a turning point, a turnaround time. And you're going to see the favour coming on every wave. And I'm going to cause a new flavour to come into your life. You're going to taste and see that the Lord is good. And you will see the prayers that you've prayed for. You will see the things that you've been lifting up in petition to me. But God says, surely the throne room of grace is open. The throne room of grace is, uh, and I just hear the Lord say, there's an avalanche of grace coming. For where problems and issues and circumstances abound, grace does much more superabundantly abound. So you're going to see the superabundance of the grace of God. The Lord says, daughter, you're going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. For even as David said, I nearly despaired, I nearly gave up, but I continued to believe I am going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. So the Lord says, cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense, we surely know that there is coming even a new season of an open heaven. So lift up your hands, lift up a, a bigger expectation for your joy, your joy will overflow. Your joy will be filled to overflowing. So God says, this is the year of the overflow. This is the year of the more than enough, says the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to come around here if I may. Praise God. What was your name, darling? Lena. Nina. Lena. 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 Father, we thank you for Lena. The Lord says, stand strong, stand fast. And even as you stand upon my word, the God says, surely know that even one who's built her house upon the rock, and you're going to find that the faithfulness of God reaches to the heavens and no good thing do I withhold from those who walk uprightly. So the Lord says, this is time when I'm putting even a fresh understanding of what it is to dream the dream I have for you. So turn your faith loose. 
Turn your expectation, your face towards heaven. But God says, surely I am going to do the I aming on your behalf. And I've gone before you. And even at this time, I'm opening up the gates. I'm opening up the gates uh, of freedom. I'm opening up the gate called beautiful. For I make all things beautiful in its time and season. And I beautify the meek with salvation. And you're going to see that even as you've had a humble heart, for I, I, w- I would say even know that meekness isn't weakness, it's strength, strength that's directed. And I've called you to be a strong woman of faith. And even now, the Lord says, um, you're ra- being raised up to be a woman that would take giant steps forward. And uh, God says, you're coming out of old mindsets and even, even low expectations. For God says, this is the day of miracles. This is a season of unfolding plans that I have for you. So there's been a season of transition, but now God says you're going to start to see the plans unfold and you're going to see and know that I've gone before you to make every crooked place straight and the straight path of the Lord is opened up. For God says that that the steps of a good woman are, are ordered by the Lord and he delights in her way. And even though there would be a stumbling, though you fall, you will not be cast down for the Lord is upholding you. So God says, get ready to go further, higher and wider than ever before and write the vision and make it plain for the days are going to be established with great significance, says the Lord. Amen. 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 Where's Christelle? Oh, over here. Praise the Lord. Also, thank Crystal, too, for her wonderful worship and uh, was awesome. Uh, could I pray? Is that your husband? Yes. He's sitting kind of close, so I figured. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Edwin. Edwin. Father, we thank you for this precious couple. The Lord says, no, that I've brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. For God says, this is a Kairos hour. For you have pressed in and you've been faithful, even in the little things. And God says, those that are faithful in the little are given much, much more. So God says, I've called you even to be ones that would carry a wisdom and understanding. The Lord says, son, even as Daniel um, was a man known for having an excellent spirit and having wisdom, God says uh, there is a wisdom even beyond your present circumstances. Even as Daniel was a counsellor even to kings at that time, God says I've put wise counsel and wisdom in your heart for wisdom builds, wisdom builds up. And so God says, son, even like Daniel, whose prayers were answered, who was known for um, supernatural breakthroughs through prayers, God says, you're going to see the miracles of, of breakthrough. You're going to see this is a new season of breaking out. And God says the, the, the financial release is coming in a greater way round about your life. For the wealth of the wicked does come into the hands of the righteous. And the hand of the diligent does prosper. And the Lord says there's even a, uh, a covenant of blessing over your lives. And I see like the rainbow in the sky, the faithfulness of God. The Lord says, daughter, know that this is a time when you're going from strength to strength, glory to glory. And it's an expanding anointing that I've put upon your life. And it's not the either or. But God says, you're going to know what it is to be multidextrous in the realm of the spirit. Because you're going to be uh, 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 an example of a Proverbs 31 woman who can put a hand to a number of things. But also she was a... Uh, she was a procurer of fine um, c- cotton and fine um, clothing. And I just see that God is giving you um, business strategy as well as kingdom power. And I just hear the Lord say that you are going to see that there are uh, streams of income that's going to come to you and through you. And the Lord says, uh, but the Lord says, I've called you even to be a mighty woman of faith and that gift of faith. That, was, that is within you. God says you're going to cause people to believe for the impossible and nothing is impossible to those who believe. So get ready for you're going to see mountains move and hills melt. For this is a time when I'm raising you up to be a kingdom woman and my kingdom is coming on earth as it is in heaven. And that's the gold standard. That's the heavenly standard. So the Lord says, you know, that there's a covenant of favour and blessing over your life. And the Lord says that it's time to accelerate even um, in greater ways, and I see, in, particularly even over your family, there's such a flourishing anointing and such a grace uh, to grow uh, very, very fast into the things that God has for you at this season. Amen. God bless you both. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Leslie, can I get a hand up again? Sorry. 
I feel like I've got my assistant here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm not going to saw you in half. <laughs> I'm here to pray for people, and I can see people that I really want to pray for. But if I, if I start with people yawning and saying, well, will she ever start? <laughs> so I'm going to pray for people at the um, close of the meeting. I'm not in a rush to get away. And um, I do want to make sure um, I pray for certain people. And um, um, M- Michelle and Craig, I really want to pray for you guys before I go. And um, I'm going to pray for Bob and Leslie and... A number of people that I, when I look at you, I know God's given me a word for you. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. Excellent. I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Joshua. And I really want to speak about, you know, God's plan and God's salvation and how God cares for the individual. Amen. You know, we're here, you know, in a corporate setting, but God sees who you are. You know, we were talking on, on Saturday about, about um, you know, uh, one young woman who uh, had an encounter with God, and, and she named him El Roy E, the God who sees me. And you know what? He kept that name. One, um, one servant girl who said, God, I see you. In fact, I don't know you like Abraham and Sarah do as Yahweh, but I call you El Roy E, the God who sees me. And you know, God kept that name. If you get a book on the names of God, it will be one of the covenant names of God. I've got grandchildren, so when the kids ask me, what do you want for Mother's Day? I say, I want a, I want a, I want a, uh, a cup with what they call me. And so for one couple of grandchildren, I'm, I'm Nana Faye. Uh, for another one, I'm, I'm Nana. For my two um, uh, little adopted boys from Taipei, I'm Nai Nai, which is Chinese for... Um, grandma, and uh, because I love what they call me. I want their picture and I want the name because that is so special to me. And uh, so God's interested in the individual and he cares for the individual. And I want to talk about God's plan of salvation that continues going. Brilliant worship this morning, James and the team. Wasn't that great? Oh, it took us to heaven. It was fabulous. Amen. I'm so glad I was in the house today. Oh, Awesome. And so God's plan of salvation continues and keeps on going. And uh, what I love about the Bible is that he's an eternal God. He's your forever father. It says in Galatians, you know, um, a foolish Galatians, did you, re- did you receive Christ by earning it, by working hard, trying to please God? He said, no, you, you receive Christ by faith, so walk ye in him. And so we start out in faith receiving his unmerited favor, but somewhere along the line, religion comes in and says, you've got to jump higher. You've got to try harder. You've got to please God. Now, God doesn't want that. He wants you to trust him. Just trust him. If you wanted to break my heart, uh, it would be that I heard back that one of my children said, I don't think mum would help me. I wouldn't ask mum because I don't think she'd help me. That would break my heart. Because I want them to know, no matter what's happening, I'm there like a flash. I'm there. They're not there to please me. It says, and for his pleasure we were created, but he has pleasure out of relationship. I don't get pleasure out of thinking my, well, my grandchildren, you know, they, um, they, they came in and they didn't leave their clothes lying around and, and, uh, they didn't eat all the food in the fridge and (laughs) whatever, but, No, I I take pleasure only out of relationship. I'm happy when they grow. I'm happy when they learn um, uh, how to behave. But I have pleasure when I hear, I love you, I love you now, I love you, I love your mum. Those sort of things. So God is wanting to, I believe, restore even the joy of our salvation. That we haven't got so sophisticated, we're now going to, we're going to work harder. We're gonna, you can sit this one out, God, because I'm going to please you so much. I'm just going to work really hard. But God's not looking for that. He wants to work in us and for us and through us. So I want us to turn to Joshua chapter 2, and we're going to look at a woman in the Bible, one of two women only that were named in the Hebrews Hall of Fame. She's named nine times in the Bible, and an amazing um, you know, thing that she got into the Hebrews chapter 11 
book of faith, but God said, by faith, these people really impressed me. And so we're going to read in Joshua chapter 2, verse 1. They're going in to take the promised land. They've waited 40 years in the wilderness, and now it's time to go in and take the promised land. So now Joshua, the son of Nun, sent two men um, to spy out the land secretly. So go and view the land, especially Jericho. And they went and they came to the house of a harlot named Rahab and lodged there. It was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men, of, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the country. Now, Jericho was on high alert because they'd heard that they, this this this. Yes, um, mighty God and their people, Israel, um, were marching towards, they're coming to Jericho. And so it's on high alert and, and they actually knew that the spies had somehow probably arrived at the house of a prostitute named Rahab. So they go there and they say, um, you know, uh, bring out those men that have been um, sent from the children of Israel to spy out Jericho to destroy it. And the woman uh, said... To them, Now the woman had took the two men and hid them up the top of the house and hid them under some straw. Uh, and so uh, she said to these men, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. I had no, I don't really know who they were. I didn't ask them any questions. And it happened as the gate was being shut when it was dark, the men went out. And I don't know where they went, but if you hurry, if you go quickly, you may be able to overtake them. So off you go. But she had actually taken them up and hidden them on the rooftop under some flax. Now, she did an incredibly dangerous thing. When she chose to hide those spies, you see, people at that nation, they'd heard about the children of Israel. They'd heard about this God who had parted the Red Sea. And so she had been thinking about that. Obviously, it shows up. She'd been pondering. And so she actually took this great decision and she threw her lot in with a God she hadn't yet met. And she um, risked her life, but she risked the life of her family. Because if they'd said, oh, well, we don't believe you, search the house. They went upstairs and they lifted the flax and they found the spies. She probably would have been executed and all her family. So she did a very risky thing. And the Bible says there that the men, of, the men pursued the, the spies and um, the gate was shut. Verse 8. Now, before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof and she said this, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us and all the inhabitants of the land are faint hearted. So Jericho's on high alert, high alert. They're, they've been scared, they've locked up the city and they're watching. And then she goes on to say, we've heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what uh, you did to the two kings of the Amorites. Uh, uh, Sion and Og, who you utterly destroyed. And when we heard this, our hearts melted. There was no more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. beneath. And so here is this woman pondering about the God she hasn't met yet. And she's hearing the reports. Now the same sun that melts butter hardens clay. The same water that hardens a boiled egg softens a potato. So all the rest of them are battening down the hatches and they're not going to take our property. And yeah, we've heard he's powerful. But there is a woman who's been thinking, I wonder if this God could ever care for me. And it says there, she asks them uh, for a promise. She said, for my mother and my father, my brothers and my sisters. She was probably in prostitution to support her family. She, it was all about her family. And I want to say today, God's got a plan of breakthrough for your family. And she's just there. She's, she, you know, it's my mom, it's my dad, it's my brothers, my sisters. You know, I remember um, before I um, came to know the Lord and you know, the Bible says no man comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws them. And I'd come from a background of pretty dysfunctional family of drinking and suicide attempts from my parents and, and sickness. Five brothers, and five of us were there, two brothers. 
How many sisters have I got? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> two brothers, two sisters. And, uh, and so I had uh, gotten involved in drugs early, you know, as, uh, you know, uh, by the time I was 17 and 18, riding a motorbike, hanging out with all the wrong people. And so I fell pregnant. And so as a pregnant teenager, I, I um, uh, through the Catholic Agency for Unmarried Mothers, um, they uh, offered people, pregnant teenagers, the opportunity to go and stay with a family who are on a register saying they would take in a pregnant teenager who would be there uh, looking after the children and in, you know... Um, for room and board, that, that would be the role, to look after the kids and that. And so I remember as I rode my motorbike up to Ipswich, to a place called Brassel, to a family I'd never met before, um, and life had suddenly shifted. It was not the next party. It was not the next, uh, you know, um, getting stoned. It wasn't that. I'm now, I'm now going to become a mother. I'm now facing life is different. And I remember in this... this uh, family I went to help was quite dysfunctional too. The marriage was in, in difficulty and, and looking after the kids. And uh, they probably thought, who is this person rocking up on a motorbike? And, you know, um, and uh, I, I, w I was pretty clueless. I was looking after, she had um, four or so children. The baby was called Scott. And I do remember one night, because uh, she worked till late sometimes, and so I would feed the kids and now I had a bath Scott, as usual. He was about 12 months, 10 months. And, um, and uh, she came home and, and she said, what's wrong with Scott? He's covered in all these spots. And I said, well, I just fed him, I bathed him and put a bit of brute on him to make him smell nice. <laughs> I was clueless. <laughs> bit of nice, uh, bit of like brute there. You're gonna smell nice, kid. I was hopeless. You don't use brute on a baby. <laughs> I was clueless. <laughs> Can't believe I told you that. <laughs> but I would lie in bed at night, getting bigger and bigger and pregnant, just wondering about the future. Wondering, wondering how I was going to look after this baby. And I was starting to think about, it's not just the next party. It's not just the next boyfriend. It's not just the next, it was the future now. I was starting to think about the future, and thinking about a little life that was going to be depending on me, amen? And I believe God got my attention. God got my attention at that time. And I believe Rahab lied in bed at night, wondering, would she always end up, have to be a prostitute? In fact, the Bible says there that as she comes to these men and she says, um, I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you will show me kindness to my father's house and give me a promise, a token, and spare my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all they have, and deliver us from death. And the men said, our lives are yours. If you don't tell anyone, uh, we totally promise to um, deal kindly with you. And she let them down through a rope uh, for her uh, from the window for her house was on the city wall and she dwelt in the wall, on the wall. So her house was built into the walls of Jericho. She was absolutely entrenched. She was stuck. And I wanna say today, you are never stuck when you know Jesus. And today, if you're stuck or there's a family member and I know people that I'm praying for, that it looks like they're entrenched, that what can turn this around? She was stuck in the wall and the Bible says that she let them down and they said, you know, if you will not dob on us, we will keep our promise and put this scarlet cord in the window. It's a sign of the um, promise that you're standing in faith, that you're agreeing and we will rescue you. And I want to say this, that God's interested in the individual. And even as I look back as a, as a clueless uh, ting, single mother, and uh, and it was it was a couple of years later before someone told me about Jesus. But I believe that I'd started to think about things, and um, I, you know, my daughter's first birthday party was a dope party. She was the only child, and everybody else was stoned. And uh, if you saw me back then, you would have said, "Would someone rescue?" 
that little girl from that crazy mother. And I have found someone rescued both of us, and his name's Jesus. Amen? His name's Jesus. And I remember before I came to know the Lord, I was at home chain smoking. My little girl was having a, a, in the cot. She was having a sleep. And this overwhelming sense came over me. And I got down on my knees and I said, God, if you're real, would you please help me? And then I got up again. And I thought, oh, I'm glad nobody saw that. And that's pretty uncool. I felt like my friend seeing me praying. Oh, nearly lost the plot there. But you see, I meant it. And the Lord will step over a thousand half-hearted, wishy-washy, religious country club prayers to get to a sincere heart. He heard that prayer from one woman, one woman who was pretty clueless and pretty hopeless. God is interested in every one of our family members. He's interested in us today as he was when we were first saved. Amen? And the Bible goes on to say that, um, uh, so she uh, brought a father and mother and, she, and, and, and they all knew that something was happening and they began to march around the walls. And it says there that as they marched around the walls, verse 17 of Joshua chapter 6, now the city was doomed by the Lord for destruction and all who were in it, only Rahab the harlot shall live. This is Joshua's instructions. They've marched around the walls, they've blown the trumpets and verse 22, it says, Joshua said, hold it. They'd waited 40 years to see Jericho again. And he said, stop right there. There is one woman in that place who has a covenant, who I've promised that I'm gonna show my kindness to her and a whole household. We're not going in yet till you go in and get out Rahab and bring out her family because I'm a God who keeps covenant promises. I'm a God of kindness. I see the individual. I see those ones that are stuck. And you think, what is gonna turn this around? Hallelujah. God is a God of incredible kindness. His loving kindness is better than life, the Bible says. The word loving kindness is, they couldn't get an English word to interpret the word hasid, or if you're Hebrew, hasid, ha, ha, phlegm, seed. <laughs> and it, it, it's the covenant love of God, and the closest we've got is the loving kindness of God. And to give you a definition of Hasid, which is God's loving kindness for you today, it is this. It is God's overwhelming desire to give of himself with no thought of the cost. For the absolute benefit, absolute benefit. It's the most sacrificial love. He is the kindest person you will ever meet. And religion has painted an angry God. You said you've got to jump high and work hard and I'm hard to please and I'm angry. He is the kindest person. He doesn't ever have a bad day. You can't get on his bad side. And his compassion, it reaches to the heavens. I heard the story of a, a man who was a priest, a man who's, who had a great um, ministry, but he, he battled with alcoholism. He battled with alcoholism and, and, um, and uh, after, you know, really getting free and he was ministering in that, he actually relapsed and he had been um, just, um, you know, um, scrounging for money to get enough scotch or whatever and he was walking along the street, somewhere in America it was, he had these bottles in his back pocket and, and, and he, he, he collapsed didn't know he was in the last stages of alcoholic poisoning. And as he lay there with his face in the gutter, I think his name was Philip, and he heard the voice of God saying, Philip, I'm with you still. Philip, I'm with you still. I'm with you, Philip. And a couple of people from one of the meetings he did came along and they, and they helped him up and they, and they helped him uh, you know, and, and he got better and he, he, he went on. But when you feel like you've blown it the worst, God's saying, I'm with you. Come on, I'm with you. You know, when you're at your worst struggle, that's when he's reaching out the most. It says he is able to be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. That word um, infirm is to have compassion. He feels what you feel. 
And with my kids, you know, I know how they feel about things. And I feel it, co-passion. You're feeling, he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. I've talked to you about my middle girl, Madeline, and the 10-year wait through three IVFs and and all the things that you have to go through with adoption and, and the program, you know. People, you know, you see her today happy and smiling, but I know her pain. I, I've sat there with her while she filled out the forms that the, this part of the house isn't fixed and get locks on all this and don't forget to put a lock on your a microwave and the garage door is too easy to reach and your back yard's not big enough. And, you know, and then before they could, could actually adopt, they had to be a certain, they had to be healthy, but they had to be a certain weight. And every three months they'd have to have a new health checkup and they'd be drinking shakes and jogging, you know. <laughs> And I remember this one particular time that um, my daughter was going for the health checkup and she said, Mum, pray because I couldn't lose enough weight and I'm about three or four kilos over. So I'm praying, she's praying. And she said, I've talked to her later, and she said, I jumped on the scales. The doctor was sitting with his back to her writing at the desk. And he said, what, what do you weigh? And she said, by faith, Mum, I told him what I should be. <laughs> Now, I don't think God's worried about that. I don't think God has a problem with that. But I saw the pain, the forms, the thousands of dollars. I know other people see the evidence of the promise of God, but I know the pain she went through. See, God feels your pain. God knows those dark nights of the soul. And God loves you as you are, not as you should be. And he wants to break the yardstick of the shoulds, coulds and woulds and tells you that he's with you right now in the midst of the circumstances. The Bible says as, he, as they, everything was held up because there was a promise to be kept for one woman that had reached out. And I thank God for the person that, that uh, you know, told me about Jesus and gave me a book to read. And you know, they were praying, I'm sure. I'm sure they were praying for the area when I just got down and prayed spontaneously, reached out to God. And as I went home and read this book, and I literally could feel the fires of hell licking up around my bed as I sat there reading it. I knew I didn't have a saviour. I might have been, you know, gone to church now and then when I was young. I might have been baptised as a baby, but I knew I didn't have a saviour. I knew I wasn't saved. And so when we were invited to a home group where you could um, you know, be saved or confess Christ as they called it. Now you say confess to a Catholic and it means got to tell us your sins. So I remember I had a full scap book. I was really serious about wanting to get saved. And I began to write down all my sins, the ones I could remember. <laughs> and there was lots of, there was a big long list, three columns long on a full scap page. And as I rolled that up, put it in the back of my jeans and we went to the home group friend of mine, Pam, she had a motorbike too. We hung out together. And as we came to that part of the meeting, we had to sit and wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to gonna get saved tonight. I'm going to have to confess my sins, but I want to be saved. I want this Jesus in my heart. Waited the whole, and then they said, well, now we're going to stand and we're going to pray. And we've got two, these two young girls here tonight are going to confess Christ <laughs> and receive him as saviour. And we prayed that prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I uh, open up the door of my life and I ask you to come in and be my saviour. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I receive you now and thank you that I'm born again. And they said, yay, they're born again. Praise the Lord. And I'm waiting them to say, now tell us your sins. Reaching for my, and they, yay, they're born again. I'm going, yay, 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 woo -hoo! I don't have to tell them my sins, you know. I probably thought, look at that salvation joy. No, I was relieved. <laughs> but that was the beginning of an encounter with the kindest person in the whole wide world. And his name is Jesus. Amen. And there's nothing he won't do for you. There's, what do we sing? There's no mountain we, he won't climb up, no valley. He won't go deep enough. He is a kind, loving God. And if you've ever experienced religion, uh, I want to say God wants to break the yardstick because he measured up for you 2,000 years ago. 
And no matter what's happening, no matter where you feel stuck, maybe you've got a loved one that's stuck, his covenant of salvation is in the house today. He's for you. He's with you. Amen? And uh, it goes on to say that they brought out Rahab. You know, her name means roomy, roomy, spacious. She made room for God. She made a lot of room for God. She was all in. If I was a gambler, which I'm not, I never, you know, it would be all the chips. I'm all in, God. I'm all in. I'm boots and all. And that's the only way to really enjoy salvation. It's not a little dabble, do you? It's not, you know, too fast, too slow, quick sermon. I'm off. I'm going to drive through Sunday, thank you. Are you all in with God? Spacious. I love the worship here because we're not hurried. And we, we hear what God is saying and we can flow with God and we feel his love. It's not a church of convenience. <laughs> and thank you, Jesus, for that. And they says, it says there, so Joshua spared Rahab and all, the harlot, her father's household and all she had. So she dwells in Israel today. Well, up to that point anyway, because she hid the spies. And then in Hebrews, it says, by faith. And her action was considered amazing faith when she took that step. But that's not all. And if we go to Matthew uh, chapter 1, and we start to read about the genealogy of Christ. And it says there, and Judah begot Perez, and Perez, uh, uh, and Zerah by Tamar, Perez begot Hezron, etc. And Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. You see, what happened was, one of the two spies, they were both princes, and one of them was called Salmon. And he didn't see a prostitute. He didn't see the least and the poorest. He didn't see a struggling back. Well, not backslidden, but however we are, he saw a bride. He saw a bride. It's sort of like a, it's like a Christian version of pretty woman. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> he saw an honourable woman. And you know, Salmon's name means peace. And Jesus is our Prince of Peace. And he not only rescues us, but the Bible says she went on to marry a prince and to be the part of Christ's lineage in the earth because her son Boaz married Ruth who gave birth to Obed, the father of Jesse, the father of David and Jesus is coming to sit upon the throne of David. This woman is famous. This woman was given an incredible role in the lineage of Christ. So he didn't just rescue her but he had a prince. You have a prince called Prince of Peace. You have a prince. And it's, it, this Bible is full of stories that God came and intervened in their life and the plan of salvation shifted everything. And I know when salvation came to my family and as God um, began to move and my father, who had been drinking all his life and wore neuroses, an angry man, but, um, and he had, uh, he had a lot of illness and uh, emphysema from smoking, etc. But not long before he passed away at 61, he, he accepted Jesus into his heart. And now my mother wasn't saved yet. And he was um, told he was going to die. And he had said, I want to die at home. And so my mum had been a nurse and she was giving him... Um, Palfium injections, which is a derivative of morphine, to help with the pain. And so when I, I prayed with my dad and led him to the Lord, and my mum was quite, quite under pressure because she's, she's, he's wanting to die at home. It was really, really um, not an easy time for her. And, um, uh, and we, they were still struggling in some ways. And, um, but my dad came out of the bedroom after I'd prayed with him. And he said, Faye, can you bring me some of those religious books? And then he said to mum, Betty, I've seen the light. <laughs> and my mother glared at me. And it was like, now your father's gone religious. You know? But he meant it. He asked Jesus into his heart. <laughs> he was born again. Came into the peace of God. And a number of years later, 
when I went to visit my mum. And she, a broken woman, because of all the suicide attempts, the asthma, the struggling to breathe, trying to raise children that were sick, dealing with alcoholism. And uh, I went to visit her one day and she was watching TV and we'd had some arguments about religion. And so she's watching TV and she said, Faye, why does God allow all this suffering? And I distinctly heard God say, zip it. Do not get in an argument. Don't defend me. And so I stopped and paused and I said, Mum, I don't understand all the suffering, but I do know one thing, that when you know Jesus, the Bible says he will wipe away every tear from your eye and there will be no more suffering. There will be no pain. And then she said these amazing words and she said, but Faye, I don't know him. I don't know him. I said, Mum, you can know him today. You can know him right now. Would you like to ask him into your heart? And she said, yes, like a little child. And she prayed the prayer and uh, just a just wonderful experience. And, uh, you know, months later she went to live with my sister Barbara. God had healed her, by the way, of a number of things. But anyway, when she passed away, she passed away, had no pain, no more asthma. God had just done such a work in her life, family visiting her every week. And she just went to sleep one night and never woke up. And, and, you know, my fear was that she'd struggle to breathe and die horribly. There was lots of things. But God just gave her the best years after she asked Jesus into her heart. My brothers, they were into drinking drugs. I said, I tried everything to lead them to the Lord. And in the end, I just said, there's really good looking chicks at church. <laughs> you're really going to want to meet some girls. <laughs> Come to my church. <laughs> no, they rocked up there really pronto. You know. <laughs> they both got saved. My brother Chris became a pastor. He's running the Baptist church the last 14 years down south. My sisters got saved, got delivered of, of um, spirit of suicide. God, the whole plan of salvation came over my whole family. And God wants you to know that he is a God of incredible kindness and he, I believe, has a kingdom of kindness. There's some scriptures. It says that um, uh, um, he will never forsake those who are suffering. It says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not fear for I am your God. He heals the brokenhearted, binds up their wounds. He actually was crushed with sorrow and carried every one of our griefs and pains. And today, I believe, he wants to restore um, the joy of our salvation, wants to restore the journey of our salvation. But he also wants to, if you're here today, and circumstances are up and down sometimes, and maybe there's a situation where you feel stuck. Uh, I'm stuck in this situation. I can't go forward. Maybe you've been walking with the Lord, but you feel like my back's against the wall. I don't have any options. But I want to say God sees you. He sees you in that circumstance. And as Rahab went on, not just to be rescued, but there was a plan for her life. And the Prince of Peace, the Prince of Peace is here to take you into the next phase of that plan. Because every stage and every phase is covered by the plan of God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. I want to pray for Pastor Danny and Steve right now, if I could. You know, the word Salma means peace, but it also means perfect and he that rewards She made it onto the role of honour of Hebrews 11. The Bible says, while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Thank you, Lord. If you guys could come and just uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just been praying. and I'm going to just stand here because yeah, you're too tall. I'll be like this. <laughs> this feels good. I know how you feel now. Looking down at people. No. Father, I just thank you for this precious couple. Get ready, says God. Get ready for eruptions of glory, explosions of power. 
For God says, this is a house of miracles, and it's also a house of kindness. And it's, there's a, a kingdom of kindness that will manifest it all around about. For you are seated in heavenly places with me, and you are surrounded even with angels. You're surrounded with songs of deliverance. And God says, there's, this is a place of a mountain of worship. Many are going to say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, for he will teach us of his ways. For God says, today I am your Ebenezer. I am the star of help, the rock of ages, and even as a memorial, as the Ebenezer stone was put in place, and it met, uh, and they said, hitherto, Samuel said, hitherto God has helped us thus far, and he will be faithful all the way. And God wants you to know, I am the stone of help, the rock of ages, the breakthrough God, and the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty to save, mighty to deliver, mighty even in great victory. And the Lord says, even as you've said, we want to build your house and you have built and it's established. And God says, I'm building your house. I'm building, God says, this is the year of the family. This is the year of breakthrough like never before. For God says, I've heard your prayers and I've heard even the cry in the night season. And God says, know that I'm zealous and jealous over your life and even over every one of your family members. And so the Lord says, you're going to be amazed that there's going to be explosions of of salvation and breakthrough and deliverance from I've come and I've come on behalf of your prayers and angels are being released right now warring angels breakthrough angels and God says you're going to see the travail of your soul and it will not be by your might of power but by my spirit the Lord says daughter even that prophetic unction to function and even bring forth what the spirit is saying in this hour and bring direction and even know that that, that even those gentle course corrections that you help people with with the word of the Lord and that gift of discernment and that insight on the inside. And even that one who would say, I've been with the Lord uh, and there's fire in your eyes and there's fire in your bones. And you're going to say again and again, and this is what he's shown me. This is what he's told me. And thus saith the Lord. And God says, you're going to go even to new realms of glory, new realms of revelation. And you are seated, seated in heavenly places are surrounding you. Even as the celebration of my goodness. And the Lord says, son, know that there are nations that are going to open up even the things that I've put upon your heart years ago. God says, you're an end time harvester. You're an end time breakthrough man. And even at this time, know that the wealth of the wicked is coming into the hands of the righteous and the hand of the diligence prospering. And God says, get ready, not just for the hundredfold return, for even as Solomon said, God, give me a wise and understanding heart. And even as he brought extravagant offerings, and God says, even as you've given that which was for your own selves, uh, for my house, know that this is a time when even as Solomon came into the thousandfold return, God says that you have activated and touched areas of breakthrough and blessing. So the Lord says, my covenant is being ratified in the realm of the Spirit. And so God says, uh, uh, there is ho- a whole new stage and phase you're entering into. And it's like He's signing uh, off of an old season of building and establishing and saying, well done, good and faithful servant servants. But it's It's also time for a celebration for you, says the Lord. It's a time for you both. And God says, even as you have honoured and served and and, and celebrated me, God says, those who honour me, I will honour. And you've run with the footman, you've ridden with the horseman. But God says, now you're going to see the chariots of of fiery angels. You're going to see the chariots of God and the horsemen thereof. My father, my father, for this is an apostolic house. This is a place that a gathering of all nations, but all, all ages and it's a generational house and it's not either or, it's a synergy of generations coming together and running together. So get ready for there is a new stage being released and there is a new phase about to unfold. And so God says, um, there is going to be a, uh, I just see a... um, a fresh focus coming around about your lives. And I see uh, teams around about you, teams, teams, teams of musicians, teams of preachers, teams, fivefold teams, hallelujah, fivefold teams. And for this is an apostolic house. And God says, teams of evangelists are being raised up. For this will be a house of souls. This will be a place that many are gonna come and find salvation. And uh, God says, get ready to reap in a new season and in a due season. And even some things that have felt overdue, but you're going to say this isn't right on time, right on target, right in the right time, the right place, says the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Could I have the musicians come? And could we just stand right now? Thank you. Oh, yeah. 
we would like to take up a love offering for Faileen, um, for her ministry and her time with us. So we're going to give you time during, even during the singing. We can have, uh, Ellen will be there. Um, and we'll make sure that every penny that is given to her is, off, is given as a gift. That's, she will get every penny of it. We'll make sure of that. And so we, we will mark off exactly the amounts that are being given. And so praise God. Hallelujah. You know, as, um, just before we, we begin to sing, uh, right now I don't assume I know everybody here, but I thank God somebody told me about Jesus. I thank God somebody um, stopped. My friend Pam and I heard us over, over here just talking about the, the spiritualist church and the, and the witchcraft and the things we're involved in. And they said, and she said, what you're doing is dangerous. And uh, so when I went to have lunch with my friend, she worked in the MMI building in the city. She said, there's this religious lady that wants to talk to us. And I said, because I had the disease to please, couldn't say no to anyone. So I said, she's got 10 minutes, then we're out of there. And I went and sat under duress in an office of a lady, and I realized I was looking into the eyes of someone who cared about me. And it was such an amazing experience. I thought, this person cares about me. And she was talking about, you know, witchcraft and all the dangers and the reality of, of Christ. And she gave us a book to read called Between Christ and Satan by Kurt Koch. Now, I've read it since, and it's totally boring. But <laughs> under the anointing, as I read that book, the verses and the number, the scriptures I needed to hear absolutely slammed into me. And I knew under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, I needed to be saved. And I thank God someone talked to me and someone spoke to me. And I believe that today, the Bible says, if you hear his voice, don't put it off. The same sun that melts butter hardens clay. So we can be good old Aussies and say, she'll be right, mate. I'll think about it another day. See, the devil doesn't get you to reject Christ. Just put it off. Just put it off until there's no more days. And he says, gotcha. So today, the Bible says, if you hear his voice, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you would like to ask Jesus into your heart, because it's your decision, it's intentional, if you would like to ask Jesus into your heart, Today, All I'm going to ask you to do is put up your hand till I see it. With no one looking around, it's just between you and God. And then I'm going to ask you to put it down and that's all I'm going to ask you. But if you were to die tonight and you're not sure where you would go. I flew in a helicopter over Christchurch soon after the earthquake and saw the devastation. 150 or so people went out that day not realising it was their last day. One lady walked out of a shop and the ground opened up. People were just taken and didn't realise it was their last day. I went back again some months later and there's a memorial in the middle of Christchurch of 159 chairs, white chairs. There were high chairs, wheelchairs, armchairs to remember the people that thought they had lots of tomorrows. Today, the Bible says if you hear his voice, so once more now with no one looking around and if you would like to acknowledge and say, that's me, I'd like to ask Jesus into your heart. Just give me a wave and then I'm going to get you to put your, and God bless you, sir, you can put your hand down. That's wonderful. Anyone else here would like to pray this prayer today? If you would like to pray this prayer today. He hung naked on a cross and he said, if you will accept me before men, I'll accept you before my Father in heaven. But if you are ashamed of me before men, there's nothing more he can do. Once more, as I look across, don't miss. Well, we're going to pray a prayer together out loud with our precious brother that raised their hand. And um, we're going to pray this prayer. And if you're still debating in your heart, why don't you make an intentional decision? I want you to pray this prayer. Let's all pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, I open up the door of my life and I ask you to come in and be my Lord and be my Saviour. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I receive you now. And thank you, Jesus, 
you said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Praise God. We thank God for that person that made that decision. The Bible says all of heaven rejoices when one person finds Christ. Amen. That's just awesome. God bless you. Wonderful, sir. Um, I want to just uh, open the altar. And um, if you want prayer for your family, if you're in a situation where you feel stuck, where you feel like your back's against the wall, the incredible compassion and kindness of God The Bible says He is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And true compassion always acts. So I feel sorry for you. True compassion acts. And today, if you need a miracle in your family, if you need a breakthrough in a situation, if you need a turnaround in your circumstances, I would love to pray for you. And so, um, and I pray for you guys. So um, I'm going to hand the mic back to Steve. And, uh, and I'm going to stay and pray with people. That's okay? We're going to release you also. If, you're not, uh, if you don't come forward for prayer, then please go and avail yourself of our cafe. There'll be, if you're here for the first time, let them know. If you're a visitor, we'll get you free coffee. There's some other things that are there also. But, um, you know, God bless you, those of you that uh, want to go. And those of you that need prayer, you just uh, stay here. Hallelujah.
Here we live, we move and have our being. Here we live, we move and have our being. Here we live, we move and have our being. And it's always you. It's always you. 